Kiara, everyone, and welcome to the Blackout Series, proudly brought to you by Black creatives Aotearoa. My name is Diane Wesch, and I'm so honored to be your host for this series, which will be held every Sunday for the next 11 weeks. I hail from Virginia Beach, Virginia, and I'm the proud product of top Haitian immigrants. I'm also an inclusive marketing consultant and the founder of Got Blacklisted. As you all know, we're not here to sugarcoat the hard stuff, but rather to share our stories, our collective truths. We'll dive deep into art, COVID-19, the Black Lives Matter movement, and more. Please keep in mind that Black Creatives Out There Ra is not a mental health provider, but rather a community of Black creatives aiming to elevate the Black consciousness. Interviews are normally 30 minutes, but on certain occasions, they may last up to 45. If you have any questions during the interview process, please be sure to drop them in the comment section below before 12.30 p.m. And now, allow me to welcome our guest this afternoon. Based in Auckland, Janina Nanaya is an interdisciplinary artist with roots from Ghana, whose practice also manifests as Niyame Gua, a sharing of tarot and ancestral communication. Welcome, Janina. Would you like to introduce yourself to our viewers? Yoda and Janina. Um, yeah, um, you introduced me pretty well. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I do a whole bunch of things. And I think what I'm passionate about is just creating space that is affirming for myself and affirming for the Black and queer community. Yeah. Thank you. Janina, we all, we all know you're an interdisciplinary artist and you've performed on a number of different occasions. However, you're also assisting with the show AMA, which will be opening as part of Tempo Dance Festival. Can you tell us more about the show? Um, yeah, so Grace, um, who is the main producer for the show, um, actually asked me to be a part of it. And it's, yeah, I'm really excited. It's supposed to be focused on Black healing um, and I guess specifically movement um, and the movement of our bodies and releasing, um, especially with everything that's been going on. It's perfect timing and yeah, connecting to the earth and our ancestors as well. So it's exciting. And in the blurb of the show, it highlights that Africa is the birthplace of so many different dance forms. Um, could you share with us what forms you currently practice? Um, I think for me personally, I'm quite a fluid or intuition based worker or this type of things that I do is more um, just connecting to my ancestors in the moment. Um, so for me, I think that's the kind of movement I would be doing is just channeling I guess is a word to use. Um, I think Grace is has done various forms of dance and um, yeah it'll be interesting to see what how everything like merges together. Yeah. And what is the date of the show? When is it supposed to be? When is it supposed to be? Um, it's on the 4th of September. Yeah and, and I think it'll be on here as well on Facebook. Okay, awesome. And has it been rather difficult, especially during the COVID-19 and this now lockdown 2.0 that we're in? Yeah, for sure. I reckon it's been quite weird, actually, um, just because we haven't been able to like meet up yet. Um, so hopefully that's going to happen on Monday. But yeah, it's been interesting navigating um, or entering into that space individually. And then I guess when we come together, it'll be cool to like sort things out. But yeah. So most of your practices are usually online or via Zoom or how do you, how are you able to, you know, do conduct your practices? Um, I think most, I think most of the things that I have done have actually been in person, but um, yeah, I think I think because it is movement, it'll just be easier to um, do via live stream. And I guess that's just what we have to do for the current moment. So you just have to kind of go with the times and yeah. Yeah, kind of just go with the flow and whatever yeah. happens. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on digital performance? Do you think this is the new future for live performance? Um, uh, I'd like to think not. Yeah, I <laughs> um, <hope> not. <laughs> yeah, I think technology is is great it's great and it's a real like advancement in humankind and all of that stuff but you know it has its ups and downs and i think it's most mostly dependent on how we choose to use it um so i think when we do things like this it's beautiful um and there's still that like exchange of energy but um yeah i think i think it just depends how you use technology it's up to us really i feel yeah 
In working with Grace Bentley, another talented Black creative, creative on this work, what has the process been like for both of you? I think it's honestly been quite challenging because um, of the times as well and what's been going on emotionally and spiritually and everything. I feel like, um, yeah, it's probably been challenging for both of us, especially because this whole um, whole focus of this piece is to do with earth and connecting to earth and how we connect to um, Asasia and um, heal through her and obviously we all have our like wounds and um, traumas that come with being a, being here um, especially in black vessels so um, yeah I think it's been challenging but I think the end result will be really beautiful and healing for both of us and hopefully whoever else gets to interact with our performance as well. Yes and can you define Asasia a little more because I'm sure our viewers yeah. would love to know a little more about it. Yeah Asasia is um, translates to Earth Mother in my native language and tree. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much Asase is Earth and Ya is, um, can be used as mother or yeah, something like that. And can you describe, I guess, the emotional feeling or the emotional connection you get from, from doing work such as this? Yeah. Oh, I think it's different every time. I think with the the last um, performance activation that I did, it was very much a, a declaration of who I was, um, despite my the heaviness that comes with being in this vessel and being able to connect with um, everything else that is um, outside of these realms and our ancestors and being able to connect with th those energies within us. So I think every time I go through a performance, it brings up different, different things that have to do with that, I guess. Yeah. And I know you do such a wide range, you have such a wide range of talents. Um, so we also know that you facilitate community and healing events to prioritize and celebrate queer, black, brown and indigenous folk. Can you tell us what inspired you to create this space titled Meant for Movement for the queer BIPOC community? Yeah, for sure. Um, mm -hmm. I think with movement, I chose the name movement because I felt like we're always moving and I was thinking of us being fluid beings and how it's important for us to be um, fluid to continue moving and operating um, in our daily lives and also connecting with our bodies like breathing and um, dancing and even speaking as movement and how powerful that is and how um, how that connects us to ourselves and we're connecting to ourselves we're connecting deeper to our ancestors and our roots um, so I think that that was something um, that really pushed me to create that space and also just because I didn't see a space like it and mm -hmm. it was what I was craving for myself and I was like well you know, sometimes you just have to do it yourself and create that space, it seems. So yeah, that's probably yes. why I exactly. look towards that. Yeah. Awesome. And do you think, what is the key takeaway that participants receive from doing um, the Meant for Movement? Um, I guess it depends what it is, because I've done <coughs> a few things. Um, I've done like healing breath workshops in um, collaboration with various people like Empower the Powerful, who is um, pretty much a breathwork healer. And then I've also thrown um, club gigs as well. So mm -hmm. I think it's just dependent on um, the circumstance, but I hope that it's just creates space for people to be themselves really and be the, the truest version of themselves. And that's like my aim with the spaces that I create, just for it to be safe. Yeah. And for your club gigs, um, what specifically do you do for the club gigs? Um, I haven't thrown one in ages, but when I was based in Melbourne, um, that was something that I did over there. Um, yeah, it was just a night for people to be able to have a safe space that was um, catered towards Black folk. Um, and so I think when that intention is set, when you're going somewhere, it, you really kind of register that it, it is you are going to be comfortable because other people are going to show up as well and so I think that um yeah I think I I think I feel like everyone else created the space as well and it's who comes um yeah that's really awesome to be able to do that to be able to create something of your own especially when you see 
um, here in New Zealand that something such as that is lacking and to take that initiative. Um, it's very, very amazing. And I'm really happy that you're creating that space here in New Zealand. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. And um, I know COVID-19 has brought a lot of anxiety and fear of the unknown into our lives. Um, in regards to your tarot reading, have you had a resurgence of people coming to you, especially during these uncertain times? Yeah, for sure. I think, I think I did like a whole, during the first lockdown, I did like a free tarot um, thing for black folks. So if you're black and you needed some affirming and stuff, it was, um, yeah, a free, my offering to the times. Cause yeah, it was super, super, um, foggy and there was a lack of clarity. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I'd like to say thank you again, because you did my tarot reading <laughs> and I was so, I was so excited because I was definitely, my emotions were all over the place. This first lockdown, I wasn't sure where I was going to end up, what I was going to do. Um, and everything worked out. Everything you, everything you spoke to me came to fruition, even found a super amazing man. So yeah, you know that. <laughs> so, <laughs> So I'm super happy and excited. Um, so I highly recommend our viewers, if you're watching this now, definitely hit up Janina, get your tarot reading. Um, Janina, in regards to your various art forms, have you adapted to the limitations of COVID-19? Like, have you been able to adapt well? I know you said you re mm -hmm. like recently you had some challenges, but now since it's literally lockdown 2.0, yeah. have you been able to manage a bit better? Or would you say it's um, a little harder than the first lockdown? Oh, no, I, yeah, I definitely feel like it's easier um, the second time around, I guess, because, like, you know how to fall into your routines from last time or so. So, yeah, it's been a little bit easier, I reckon. Um, but I guess it still comes with its challenges, as being in isolation does. But, yeah, yeah. I feel like it's almost kind of in ways benefited my practice and made me really be able to sit with myself and those, mm -hmm. like, mirrors that come up naturally when you're, yeah. Yeah. So better, <laughs> is it better now for you like especially regarding like self-care practices or ways to recenter and realign yourself would you say you've kind of found a routine now that's a bit better for you versus compared to the first lockdown that we had yeah definitely I think I am a little bit more disciplined in my um self-care rituals and just doing yoga is something that I really like to do so um yeah doing that or even practicing tarot on myself as well is um something that I do regularly yeah and earlier this year you curated the performance piece forgive me for my pronunciation <laughs> titled <laughs> titled Nipa Dua yeah, can Nipa, you just Nipa Dra yeah oh thank you <laughs> can you describe to our viewers what that performance represented for you yeah, I think, um, so it, uh, Nipodra means um, the human tree, or essentially it means the body, um, but Nipa means person and Dwa means um, tree. And so that's the beauty as well of any other language that's not English is the soul that's in it and the fact that the word um, body symbolizes our connection to earth as the tree and our connection to our vessels and how they're one. And I think that that was what I was trying to portray in that performance was um, our connection to the earth and you can't really separate it and just being mindful of um, how we affect our, uh, how we treat ourselves on the day to day, how we treat other people and how that affects not only us, but the, the results that it's had on earth mother and also yeah, just the environment in general. Mm -hmm. what, was yeah. the, what was the feedback like on that? What, what feedback um, were you getting after that performance? Um, I think mostly everyone was, almost didn't know what to say, I think, because it was quite a vulnerable, um, intimate performance. Like there were probably only like 20 people there and it was, yeah, there there was like partial nudity and like all of that stuff. So it was quite, um, and lots of rituals. So it was very, very intimate. Um, so I think, I don't know, everyone just seemed quite like speechless. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you think you'll um, be doing a performance such as that again? Especially like 
towards the end of the year or anytime soon? Are you working on anything new as of now? Um, I think for now I'm just concentrating on um, next week's performance and then um, if something else blows after that then maybe, but yeah, not, not, for, the, not for the current time. <laughs> Well, Janina, I would like to transition our conversation, if that's okay with you. Yeah. Um, over the course of this year, we've witnessed an epidemic of violence towards the transgender and non-binary community. However, so often those stories don't make the headlines or receive the same attention as the Black Lives Matter movement. What were your thoughts on the Auckland, New Zealand, New Zealand BLM movement? Did you feel included and represented? Mm -hmm. um, I think to an ex I think to an extent, um, I guess with the whole BLM movement, it's hard not to know what's just for show, especially because of like social media times and Instagram and the hype and all of that that stuff. So I think, um, yeah, I definitely felt included as like a black person, um, as as a non-binary person. Not too sure, but then in in the vessel that I'm in, I'm quite. Um, cis assuming so people will assume that I'm cisgendered so I think that in itself allows me to be safer in my environment than someone that is visibly trans um yeah so I think my experience is kind of varies um yeah what were because I'm assuming did you attend the BLM movement here in Auckland yes it's awesome and um what were a lot of your I guess your feelings and emotions towards that. Like, how did you feel on that particular day? So. Yeah, it was, it was beautiful. There are really beautiful aspects of it. But then I think the fact that we were coming together for that and then that being, um, was heavy, you know, I yes. think naturally, yeah. Um, and yeah, there are black trans folk that are passing away every day, every day mm -hmm. um, and it's yeah it's it's I think it's difficult like for it to just be a one time thing and it's like you need we need to see the constant um things changing and for it not to be just because of hype yeah mm -hmm. yes and we see we do see now that the U.S. is getting a lot of uh, media and a lot of attention um and I did hear you know you said a lot of um trans folks here in New Zealand are passing can you explain um what has been some recent occurrence, occurrences, especially to our viewers who are not as informed? Um, yeah, I feel like I feel like a lot of um, people are passing, mostly from what I'm seeing in the in the states. Um, but I, of course, pe trans people here get their fair share of um, violence and um, have their fair share of trauma. Um, yeah, like I said, mm -hmm. my experience is a little bit different because of the vessel that I'm in. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know if I can like speak on that. Yeah. Okay. How about do you do you happen to know? Will you able, will you be able to speak on what racism looks like towards the Black transgender New Zealanders here, or what it could yeah. identify as? I could definitely speak on what it might look like <laughs> within the the Black or African community. Um, yes. um, that's definitely not something that is accepted and it, there's definitely a lot of transphobia and even just homophobia. Um, and I can speak for the Ghanaian community. Um, yeah, and a lack of understanding and space for that kind of thing um, in general. And I think obviously that's due to colonialism and the fear that surrounds that kind of thing. And um, yeah. It's quite sad, but yeah. Yes. Um, what were your thoughts on the Wellington Trans Lives Matter movement? Were you able to attend that? Um, I'm in Auckland, so no, and I'm not okay. too sure yet mm -hmm. what happened on that side. Okay. And so do you happen to have um, a big community of, I guess, I would say maybe other activists that are trying to maybe solicit some form of change here in Aotearoa? Yeah, for sure. I would say like all my friends are activists mm -hmm. in their own ways. Um, I feel like you automatically become an activist if you're yeah. brown, black or indigenous, essentially, um, without trying to be. Um, so, yeah, definitely. Um, my, my closest friends are doing things um, with mental health and um, um, holistic 
medicine and ways of healing and there are so many different ways in which we can yeah feed and be and feed into this the greater scheme of things yes especially yeah. with the a lot of the healing workshops do you find that a lot of folks are coming especially because of the times we're in now i haven't actually put any healing workshops on mm. um currently just because of COVID. Yeah, COVID. Um, yeah, but I guess in the past, yeah, for sure people did um, show up because that's not really space that we have here where it's more focused on like healing for queer folk or black folk or whatever it may be. Um, so yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Thank you for sharing that. Nice. Um, and I know you were scheduled to perform at the Basement Theatre for the Dear Ebony event along with Jess B and Chica. Uh, we have a few viewers, including myself, who purchased tickets and we're pretty sad that it was canceled due to COVID-19. <laughs> and I know our viewers would love to hear a sample of your poetry. So would you mind sharing one of your poems or improvised melodies with us? Yeah, for sure. I have some writing right here that I can read. <laughs> cool, this is called Our Intricate Evolution. I have been sitting in silence with you. We have been writing our thoughts on paper, pushing them politely across the floor into each other's parts until our arms are covered in blood, the blood of our beings that floated this earth before us. Our sacred roots, rooted pelvises sitting on these wooden floors, examining each other's parts and what they mean, how they sit in each other's vessels and pump after we have planted them into these soils. We worship Wade in Ogun's waters who sharpened our spears for arms that we used to plow into each other until our hips are covered in mud. The mud where the tree meets our feet becoming rooted like the roots of the trees they strong slept in. The solar circle above our heads pouring in through the skylight. We breathe at the same, time, at the same pace now. We mimic them who shines above our heads, we reflect what he reflects back to us in rays, in the heat of each beam of survival that sinks into our skin, whatever heat and harmony that holds, whatever burn and balance that brings to. Our hearts, our hearts held in each other. This is how it should be here. Our arms have graciously been pulled from gravity upwards, towards and in. The impending hunger pangs that make every single bone in our fingers ache. The elasticated, shea butted skin absorbing with every beat of the galaxy within our chests. Here we learn that our throat is a complex tool. We unlock our throats with the keys of resilience and remembrance, remembering the songs we once sang as they dipped in the depths of Yamoya. They unlock our throats with their iron key we learn the device in our necks, the multifaceted machine, vessel and portal entity within itself exists. They unlock our throats and our heads begin to spin against resounding resistance running, trickling into our ears. This is the evolution, the elevation of the melanated being, the transmuting dance of our bodies, the grace of our dance together, the evolution of our entire being is a circular winding rotation winding to unwind the ties of each other's flesh and string. And this is how we sit with and in around each other and heal, holding truth with and in around each other together. We carry each other with and in around each other together on these faded wooden floors under the sun. <laughs> that was wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Nice. Um, and may I ask what inspired that? What inspired that? Um, I think I wrote it in a time where I was just really finding myself and yeah, just flowing with the process of it. And I feel like that's what it's about, just our evolution and process of healing and how it's continuously ongoing and that we should do it together as well. Yeah. Did you find it um, being maybe like a very emo emotional process for you? Yeah, I being think I find done? everything being emotional. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Because it's just like a lot of like unearthing and revealing of yourself. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> awesome. Thank you. And so uh, for a lot of your gigs, I know, so you usually do a lot of the improvised melodies and a lot of the poetry. Do you have anyone I mean I know we're in COVID you know lockdown 2.0 but when level two I guess 
comes around hopefully tomorrow. Will you be having any more shows? I know uh, Dear Ebony got canceled, but do you have anything else that may be going on or any ways we could support or? Um, there might be something, there is something coming up that I don't know if I can say yet. But, okay. So that's a surprise. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, that, mm -hmm. there, is, there is some stuff coming up that I will be a part of, yeah, that will probably pop up on my socials or something. Yes, awesome. Do you think you'll um, be maybe doing any poetry online? Or doing like maybe um, like again, like any like lives or just random poetry or improvised um, melodies online? Not too sure, maybe, but I do post like a lot of my poetry on my Instagram as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so if anyone does want to have a read of that, it's all it's all through my Instagram. <laughs> yeah, awesome. And can you let your um, can you let our viewers know um, your Instagram handle? I'm sure um, they'd love to know. It's Janina dot Nana dot Ya. So J A N A N A dot N A N A dot Y A A. Thank you for that. And then no we do have a question from an anonymous viewer. Um, and this is a question. Uh, if you haven't come out yet, what is the process to come out to the queer Black community? Because mm. that's what they want to know. So. I think with that question is also like, you, you don't have to come out um, mm -hmm. if it's not safe for you. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess it's like, thinking about your environment and thinking about whether it is safe for you, what's, what, was, what is going to happen or what could happen if you um, are going to come out, like are you going to feel um, empowered or are you going to feel in danger, I guess mm -hmm. is something to just think about because sometimes coming out in the black community or African community isn't like the nicest thing, um, but if you are feel, feeling like you are going to be safe or um, yeah, I think it's just important for us to be in our truth and be ourselves um, and allow room for us um, or allow room for ourselves to um, grow and cultivate our fluidity. Um, and there is so many, there's so much queer black fam in, um, in Aotearoa, if you're in Aotearoa, um, that will support you and like hit me up if you want to have some conversations and I know I have like other friends as well that would be grateful to talk to you and give you some advice. Yes yeah, I'm sure they're grateful for that because it is very beneficial to have safe spaces to be able to yeah. do that I'm sure. Right? And um, if you just give me one moment I'm just going to check my messages to see what other questions. All right. What other self-care practices that you engage in to protect your emotional well-being? Um, what other self-care? I definitely go, I, I think I like to think of the sun as a force that charges us um, and charges our bodies. So something that I like to do is literally, if I'm feeling a bit shit or something, I'll go outside and turn my back to the sun so it mm -hmm. kind of like charges my back almost and you can feel the difference in your your whole body if you just sit in the sun for a little bit because the sun is life force and warmth and radiance you know so yeah, and then, that's that I do. awesome I, i'm actually the same way i do really feel like the sun definitely energizes me or definitely hugging a tree that's like this yeah. thing that i've been doing forever <laughs> and people will just stare at me like i'm weird but they don't understand like the beneficial things that come from it just being in nature you know again taking your shoes off walking in the grass going for yeah. a walk getting fresh air all of that stuff is so so important so beneficial to mental health and just just your well-being i guess in general yeah. um i would say sorry I keep on my phone and also i guess i would also want to ask because i know we're about to wrap up soon if you had maybe I always like to leave our viewers with something positive, you know, like a nice key takeaway. So if you had any advice um, for folks to, you know, keep the momentum, you know, um, to keep the same energy and I guess maybe um, a suggestion of what we can do to help the trans and non-binary community, what yeah. would you, what advice or what little tip could you leave yeah. us with today? 
I guess for everyone that's not queer or black or whatever it is um, that's on the other side of things, just to be open and listen to people and really just maybe even stop talking <laughs> for a little bit and just, yeah, absorb and listen to people's stories and people's hearts because there's so many things that are going on that I feel like a lot of people have like no idea about or haven't really absorbed um, properly. So I think just as a community, it's really important that we listen to one another and I feel for like our queer and our black whanau, um, that an indigenous whanau as well, that um, we need to give ourselves permission to rest a little bit um, and not yes. always be doing all the, the mahi or the work. Yeah. Yes, I think rest <laughs> is so vital. So well, important. Thank you so much for joining us today, Janina. Like it yes, was thank you. such an thank honor you. to chat with you. Um, so <laughs> we're gonna definitely wrap up now. Um, and I just wanna tell our viewers again, thank you so much for taking the time to join us this afternoon. Be sure to catch us live next Sunday with actor, singer, and musician, Quentin Warren. He relocated from Los Angeles to New Zealand in 2017. He is a familiar face on a number of US commercials and guest starred on The Wild. Amazon Prime's latest teen dramas. Until next Sunday, 12 p.m. New Zealand time, my name is Diane Wesh, and you have been watching the Blackout series. Kakite. Mm -hmm.